So you're playing Genshin, you're doing some 10 pulls, and you get five star, I'll hate them. Now, a couple days ago, I've been fighting with social media, so my uploads have been a little bit weird. A couple days ago, we did I'll hate them's basic guide. So if you want to check out how his kit works, do be sure to go look at this video here, and then come back, watch this video. So this is going to be his artifact grinding hell guide. And in this video, we're going to look at some designated teams and play style for I'll hate them. Now, we are using a different Alhatham than we used in the basics. We're using my Alhatham, who I got at 30 pity while trying to get Sethos. I did get Sethos, but I did need another good on-field Dendro driver, so I was actually fairly happy that I got Alhatham. I did spend 800 resin yesterday trying to get a Gilded Artifact set for him, and I got nothing. So my Alhatham in this video is not going to be super well built, but he will suffice for this because this is going to be much more talking about the kind of artifacts that you want to go for and the kind of teams that you want to use them in. So real quick, let's go look at my Alhatham in this video. My Alhatham is level 70 out of 80 with 18,000 attack, 1300 EM, and 334 uh, 1300 attack, and uh, 3,003, wow, I'm just all over the place, 334 EM. Uh, his crit split is 62.9 over 154.5, and he does have 112 ER. Uh, you can see 75.3% on the Dendro damage bonus. He gets Dendro damage bonus upon ascension. Weapon uh, level 89 out of 90. I actually take this right up to 90 real quick. R2 Wolfing. I did go ahead and use, uh, I am going to go ahead and get this R5 for him because I am enjoying using this weapon on him. Now, uh, for artifacts. We do have two piece deep wood, two piece wanders true. I did say that it wasn't super good, but it'll suffice for this video. C0 talents 264. So the team that I wanted, I'll hate them in or needed a new on field Dendro driver is my Hyper Bloom team, which is going to be uh, Kuki, I'll hate them, Xing Cho, and uh, Yai Miko. So I'll hate them as a really, really good on-field Dendro driver, right? You do need him on-field to be the driver uh, in these teams. So working with Kuki and Yaimiko and Xingqiu actually works out really, really well for creating. This isn't so much of a quick bloom team. This is closer to a pure hyper bloom team, but he is still getting some spread damage in there um, with Yaimiko and Kuki's help. Now we are going to look at uh, his artifacts. We are going to actually look at Kuki's artifacts as well because I'm running a kind of different, interesting uh, team with one of my community members, Zucchini. We were talking about how I could do this team uh, with certain artifact sets uh, because we really want somebody to have deep wood. I'll hate them as solo Dendro on this team, but we still need deep woods on somebody um so we'll look at where that is you notice that my i'll hate them does not have four piece deep woods i am very very much enjoying this team as you can see kuki's hyper blooms are uh there's a lot of numbers going on uh kuki's hyper bloom should be doing right around 30k a little bit below 28k now this is obviously in a domain that gives more em uh but typically outside of this domain she's hitting about 25k per hyper bloom for a very specific reason, I actually dropped her Hyper Bloom damage. For the artifacts, right? My Alhatham has two piece Deep Woods, two piece Wanderer's Troop, which isn't bad, but it's not good, right? You really, really want to get either four piece Deep Woods or four piece Gilded, Gilded being his best set. Now, like I said, I did run Deep Woods yesterday, 800 resin, didn't get much, but we're still going to talk about Gilded. Uh, which is in the same domain as Deep Woods. Gilded, two-piece set, increases elemental mastery by 80, which I'll hate them is going to be good on. The four-piece is going to be when you cause an elemental reaction, you are going to either get attack buff or EM buff, depending on the other elements in your team. Same element gives you attack, different element gives you EM. So this four-piece set is really, really good on I'll hate them because this, in this particular team that I'm running, would give him an extra 200 and 230, 150 plus 80, 230 EM, which would be really, really good in this team where we want him to get that spread uh, damage. Now, another artifact set that you can use is gonna be four piece deep woods, uh, gonna get Dendro damage bonus plus 15%. Uh, after elemental skills or burst hit an opponent, their Dendro resistance is decreased, meaning that Dendro damage goes up, that being Hyper Bloom and I'll hate them's personal damage. Now, this is another set that you can run on I'll hate them. Um, if he is the solo Dendro driver and, and you don't want to put it on somebody else. Now, something to notice about the set, it doesn't say you have to deal Dendro damage, it just says you have to do elemental skill or burst damage. 
I'm running Deep Woods four piece on my Kuki Shinobu. This is my Nahida's current set. I'm just doing some testing right now. Uh, so she does have a full EM set. She does have my backup R2 Iron Sting. That's only at level 70 instead of my level 90 R5 one. So I can easily get her EM up even further. Right now she only has 756. I could easily get that over 800. But having this four piece Deep Woods on her instead of Alhatham, allows me to still get that dendro shred from the four piece because the skill will still hit the enemies making her hyper bloom damage go up making hatham's damage go up and this would work even in a um an aggravate or spread team like a pure aggravate spread team which we'll look at later so doing it this way i'm still gonna get a fair good amount of hyper bloom damage it's gonna still increase alhatham's damage but it allows me to start trying to get gilded on Alhatham. Now, for the substats on these artifacts and main stats, crit damage, attack percent, crit rate. This one's actually pretty good. If that defense had been EM or ER, that would have been really, really good. That attack percent could have been EM as well. Um, for the plume, ER, crit rate, crit damage, attack percent. This is nearly perfect. We do want some attack on Alhatham, but we still want a lot of EM. So if this attack percent had been EM, it would have been perfect in my opinion but having attacks not gonna be bad elemental mastery main stat on the sands uh defense attack crit damage this is one of my weaker pieces i kind of just threw this stuff on alhatham whenever i got them and i'm trying to get them a different set ginger damage bonus goblet uh i actually continued rolling this this is em crit rate uh, er and crit damage that crit damage is now over 12 percent so it's not a bad piece this is actually going to be like a really good off piece for him uh until i can hopefully get a better uh, goblet but the substats are perfect Perfect. EM, ER, crit rate, crit damage, perfect on this piece. And then of course, crit damage uh, circlet with crit rate and then some HP. I believe that this is actually my Farina's circlet normally, um, but I'll give it back to her whenever I'll hate them because it's a zone. Um, so not a bad piece, the HP percent, flat HP could have been uh, ER and EM, but you know, we don't get to choose exactly what we get on our artifacts. So we kind of got to work with what we got. So again, like I said, not a bad build on Alhatham, not a good one, not a great one, but not a bad one. The good thing about trying to get Gilded though, is that Gilded and Deep Woods are in the same domain. So you should be getting them at the same time while trying to get Gilded for uh, Alhatham. You should be able to get a set of Deep Woods for either Alhatham or for somebody else. Now let's go look at another team. And this team is gonna be much more exactly aggravate and spread where we want as much off field electro damage and some extra off field dendro um to allow i'll hate them to get spread reactions now we are gonna throw uh layla in here one to show something two we don't have a healer so we want a shielder right layla is my best built shielder easily because in layla we trust but dendro and cryo don't have a reaction together so they can exist at the same time on the enemies without interfering so even having layla in here with her skill and her burst shooting off yaimiko Nahida and I'll hate them are still going to be able to get their spread and aggravate reactions. Layla's just kind of going to be there protecting with a shield, giving some four piece tenacity buff, but not ruining the reactions, right? You're going to be seeing a lot of, a lot of aggravate, a lot of spread reactions. You are going to see some superconduct coming in there. That's not hurting anything, right? It's making them weaker to physical. We're not doing physical damage, but it's still not going to hurt the team. I also wanted to show that they don't have a reaction for a uh, hyper fridge team um, that can also be good where if we were to take out Nahida and have a hydro character in here uh, and we were to take out Yaimiko and throw like Kuki in here, then we can run a hyper fridge team where we're freezing the enemies, still getting blooms off of them and then hyper blooming it. So because Cryo and Dendro don't have a reaction together, that's why hyper fridge teams or virgin fridge teams actually work fairly well. Now, we of course can take Layla back out, put Kuki in. Uh, in this instance, we would want to have Kuki built on like four piece tenacity healing. Um, even having like a good crit split can be very, very good so that way Kuki can get some of her own aggravate reactions. This is going to be a pure, pure aggravate spread team where we're just only Electro only dendro we are just trying to get the team as a whole is going to be causing a ton of damage right we're not vv shredding we're not trying to give the majority of the damage to one character yaimiko is going to have a lot of damage uh 
I'll hate them's gonna have a lot of damage. Even Nahida is gonna have a lot of damage. Kuki's gonna be able to get some damage in there as well as keeping us healed and giving us the tenacity buff. This is a fairly, fairly good team comp for a pure aggravate, pure spread team. Yes, you can have a, um, a, 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 an animal character in there with VV Shred that'll be giving more damage to Yaimiko and Kuki, not more to I'll hate them. I am of the mindset that before Farina came out, Quick Bloom was not easy to do. You were much closer to a pure Hyper Bloom than a Quick Bloom team using like Yelong or Xingqiu because you had so much Hydro. With Farina, you can do a, a true Quick Blue team, Quick Bloom team, because the Hydro application is much slower. So in this, we're gonna have uh, I'll hate them, Kuki, uh, Yao Yao, and Farina allowing Yao Yao to help build fanfare points with her skill, with her burst. But this is going to buff Alhatham with fanfare, allowing him to get the uh, spread reactions from Kuki's skill because uh, Farina is not applying Hydro super, super fast. And then getting Farina's skill damage as well. So this is going to be a really, really good team for a quick bloom where we want to quicken, aggravate, spread reactions in between the hyper bloom. So I'm going to go back in there real quick and you're going to see that I'll hate them is going to be triggering spread reactions. Kuki is going to be spreading aggravate reactions or triggering aggravate reactions. And every now and then when blooms appear, we are then going to hyper bloom them, doing a good amount of dendro damage all of a sudden, and then going back into uh, doing aggravates and spreads. So you're gonna see there's gonna be a, a set time where no blooms exist, we're doing spread and aggravate reaction, blooms appear, uh, appear we hyper bloom them, and then we go back into doing spread and aggravate reactions. So this would be a true quick bloom team where we're purposefully doing hydro slower. So this was actually a really fun team and I would love to run this team. However, Yao Yao belongs to a different team. Farina belongs to a different team. I am a person that has to build not a character, but a team. And I try to do it without borrowing characters from other teams. So earlier I was running Alhatham, Kuki, Shincho, and uh, Yaimiko. That is because all four of these characters were available for grabs. And what I mean by that is that I already have my Nilu Bountiful Core team ready for whenever Nilu reruns. That have, will have Nilu, ya, Nahida, Yao Yao, and Coco. Coco being my on field hydro driver with 950 EM. Those four characters, I will not put them on another. I will not put them on another team. Uh, my Raiden Hyper Carry team, Raiden C6, Sara C6, Benny, and Chevy, those characters belong to Raiden. I don't want to build a team with them. Uh, my the, the part where I kind of do have some overlap is going to be my Farina, Dia, Kazuha, and Benny team, where Benny is split between those. So like, but that's such a good team for Dia that, and I love running Dia, that like I would rather give that to give Benny to Dia than give her to Raiden. So when I say that this is the team, that the reason that I chose this particular character for this team to build, all four of these characters were available. I can make a full team of four with available characters. So that is why I have been really, I, I, I tried to make this team work. And once I figured out the rotation, I'm really, really liking it. Anyway, let's get back to I hate them. I hate them for weapons. Wolf Fang, R2, gets up your crit rate, can use this because it increases the elemental skill and burst damage by 20% as well as increasing the crit rate. However, to trigger this passive, your character has to be on field, which is why it's super, super good for I'll hate them because you're going to have I'll hate them, you have to have I'll hate them on field to be doing his Dinger application. If you don't have uh, Wolf Fang or you don't have Battle Pass and you need some other options, I have seen a lot of people, or I have seen some people, talk about Chiori Signature Weapon, mainly because it's gonna be a stack stick, right? It's gonna increase your crit damage by a ton. Uh, this weapon is actually pretty good on a lot of characters just because of the amount of crit damage that it gives out. It'll also increase the elemental skill damage, but you can't get the full passive unless you're gonna run a Geo character with I'll Hate Them. And it would probably have to be a character like Chiori, which I would just give Chiori back her weapon. So I don't think that I'll ever use that. Uh, for a free to play option, for a good free to play option, you do have Iron Sing, it's gonna get up EM, you're gonna be able to use the passive. You do still need to make sure that you have a good crit split, um, but this would be, you having this weapon is gonna be a really, really good free to play option. 
You do have the other battle pass weapon, uh, Black Sword, but Wolf Thing will outperform the Black Sword specifically because you can use its passive more than Black Sword. Then of course you do have the always good three-star Harbinger of Dawn. You do need to run a shielder, Layla, uh, Zhongli, or like Kirara if you want to do run Double Dendro. You do have to make sure that you have a shielder to keep his HP up so that way you can get the full use out of this weapon. Now that is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments. Myself or somebody else will be sure to answer it. I'll see you in the next one.